Good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Mina Sohail. I'm an editor with Eye on IB. We take great pride in inviting international organizations to come and give opportunities to Pakistani students. This is now the third year of Quill and Scroll in Pakistan and we're proud to be hosting it. We're especially grateful to have with us today Ms. Laurie Keeley, who serves as the director of Quill and Scroll. She works in a role as assistant director of National Scholastic Press Association in Minneapolis. Lori has been the advisor at the St. Louis Park High School in Minnesota, the Plymouth Fiddle School in Minnesota, and Portage High School in Indiana. She has also worked as the National Director for Contests and Critiques at the NSPA from 98 to 2000. She also served as the Journalism Education Association as a Scholastic Press Rights Director from 2017 to 2020, and was in charge of the Minnesota High School Press Association mentor program from 2009 to 2012. She has a bachelor's degree in English from Indiana University and a master's degree in education from University of Missouri. Ms. Keeley was a 2016 Dow Jones News Fund National High School Journalism Teacher of the Year as well. But extremely grateful that Ms. Keeley has given Pakistani students the opportunity to take part not only in this prestigious competition, but also possibly be inducted as a Quill and Scroll member if they so meet the criteria. Today, we will be focusing on the competition itself. I will now request Ms. Flory to give her a presentation, after which we will be open to a session of question and answers. If for any reason you are unable to join us, a recording of tonight's session will be available on our website. Now, over to you, Ms. Keeley. Perfect. I am very excited. Thank you, Ion Ivy, for having me here. We are kicking off our 2023 editorial writing contest that we do together. Quill and Scroll is an international honor society for high school yeah. journalists, and Ion Ivy was our first non-school charter. We're very excited to be to work with them and be here as part of this. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk. Um, about a lot of material in a short amount of time. Um, if you do have questions, um, my email's at the end and feel free to email me as well. All right, so welcome. We're gonna cover three main items today. First of all, we're gonna talk about the basics of journals of writing. We'll have some items specific to opinion writing. This is the type of writing you will do. And we'll talk about how these will be judged, including the deadlines, and deadlines are really important. All right, so this is the prompt for our um, 2023 contest. This is its third year in existence. We're excited to have it. Um, your prompt, now that we have had at least three years since the pandemic began, that's the COVID-19 pandemic, some research indicates teen mental health has been negatively impacted by this international event. What is the impact of this event on Pakistani's youth's mental health and more importantly, how can teens unify to break the stigma concerning accessing mental health help? So there are two parts to that. First, what's the impact of this global event on the youth in your area? That's how you're going to keep it local. And then how can teens unify to break the stigma of accessing that help for mental health? All right. I put this in the in the beginning so you could, as we talk, um, think about that prompt and keep it in your mind. All right. We're going to talk about the basics. We're going to talk about content first, terminology and definitions, and then journalistic writing content. As you are crafting, or actually before you even begin to craft, you really need to think about what you're going to say. What's your point? Um, what's new about this? Who's the intended audience? Why does this topic matter to the audience? How does it matter in your community? I've given you that with the uh, in the prompt. And what should the readers do about the issue? And why should people care? All right, so what do you want to say? What's new? Your basic terminology, your audience, or the people who would be reading it, journalism is meant for a mass audience, and we want you, even though this will be read by um, professionals, either educational professionals or media professionals, usually we have a combination of that, judge this. Um, it is intent, like they will read it as your reader, so keep that in mind. They want to make sure that you do have, well, journalists do strive for fairness and objectivity, which we could talk about 
a three to four hour time frame if we wanted, but we won't. Um, journalists do normally strive for this, but in opinion stories, you're supposed to have a persuasion, um, persuasive argument based on facts. And you'll see that we're going to be heavy on facts here in a little bit. Your lead is that first paragraph of the story. We call in journalism, we call um, the five W's and H um, are very important because they'll help you explore your content. In fact, when we get to um, a little activity at the end that you, it would be great for you to go through and that'll help you with this. Your five W's are who, what, when, where, why, and how. All right. Reporting. For you, this is going to be the research you're going to be doing. All right. Attribution. Transparency is really important in journalism. You need to show where you get your information. So if someone, if they're, if they're interested or if they don't agree, they can go and look and see where you had your information. It's also important to keep that information um, in the context of what it's given. All right, we'll talk about that. It's also important that it's from a credible source. Um, I might be a credible source. I am a credible source on this topic, but I might not be on, or actually I'm not, on nuclear physics. That would not be a strength of mine. All right. At the end, you should have a call to action or what your students or what your readers can do about the issue. And remember, your your audience should be teens. All right. How can they do it and when should they do it? So that's just basic terminology. Okay. Basis, basics of journalistic writing. Have credible facts and keep them in context. If you take a little snippet of what somebody says, you could easily... Uh, manipulate that message. You don't want to do that in journalism. You need to make sure that you ha are keeping, getting credible sources and keeping that information um, true to its origin. All right. What makes something credible? Here's some questions for you and some comments. All right. Is the publication dedicated to information, not advocacy? If you think about, um, especially in the U.S., um, a political campaign might have um, would be for one candidate. So that's important to think through. Um, is it something that um, is coming from a source that's trying to manipulate you or change your mind in the beginning? All right. Are they academic articles that are peer reviewed? Um, when I taught high school, most I would always get the question about Wikipedia. Can we use Wikipedia as a source? I would tell you it's not a great source. I think you there are many, many, many better sources out there than Wikipedia. It might be a starting point to see kind of what they're using, but I, I could go in and change a Wikipedia page. Um, also, look to see if you're, you're, the people you're talking to or being quoted are experts in the field. And are you able to interview them? If you can, go for it. Um, stakeholders, those are people who have a vested interest or experience with a topic. All right. In this instance, it might be a health professional, right? Especially mental health. And then personal observations that you verify with others. Sometimes those can be important, especially in that lead or that first paragraph. All right. Um, I really like this. Um, this is a Pulitzer Prize winning um, journalism opinions piece from a man named Roy S. Johnson. All right. And so we're going to look at what he has here first. The beauty of this right now is you will be able to pause this. I will not be reading this to you. So you can pause it and read through it as we go. I will just say, here's the first, here are the first two pages, and then you can pause, and then I'll say, here are the next two pages, and then here are the next two. So right now, here we go. These are the first two pages. Please hit pause and read. And these are the next two pages. Please hit pause and read. And these are our last two pages for last page. Please hit pause and read. All right. If you look at this, you can see these are our areas on what makes a source credible. All right. Here, I've highlighted the sources that Johnson used. All right. Primary documents are his father's original Social Security card application from 1936 and his World War II draft registration card. In the U.S., everyone, had, when they're born in the United States, they get what's called a Social Security number card, and that has a number on it that then um, you use for taxes and all kinds of other reasons. Um, he also has the birth and death dates that are inscribed on the tombstones. 
He talked to someone from the Oklahoma Historical Society, all right? And he talked to the associate curator of the National Museum of the American Indian Anna Comanche, um, um, or sorry, he didn't, sorry, it was from the Smithsonian Magazine, um, which is a cr very credible source. The Smithsonian is a huge um, multi-building um, historical document, or um, um, they have, it's museum after museum after museum in Washington, D.C. That's It's amazing to go to. Um, they have everything from air and space to national history to, um, actually there's a African-American museum there as well, which is amazing. Um, Holocaust as well. All right. There, I could keep going. I won't. Um, but very, very, very credible and reputable. Smithsonian Magazine, they used to publish, um, would be published by them. Um, a professional professor of history. And in this, again, um, the professor Miles would be very much seen as a credible source because they're in um, the discipline that they're teaching it. All right. They also have the Friedman rules there too. And um, the U.S. Census um, uh, information as well. And the U.S. Census is something that um, the government takes uh, kind of a role of or, um, about everyone who's part or who's in the United States at the time. And it's, it's mandatory. You have to do it. So, all right. Here are some of the ways home, um, the sources that he has. All right. I'll let you look at those again. We just kind of went through them as well. Also note that he hyperlinks. I meant to say that before. Um, which is a great way to show your reader, especially if you, you're obviously in um, or online, to show your reader that you did have information from a credible source. All right. Basics of journalism writing. Be concise. Keep it simple. Um, I cannot tell you how many times by cutting down your writing, you'll make it much better. Um, you don't need to have a lot of words to make a big impact. So keep it very simple. And you'll see here, um various sentences like right? type length and types of sentences all right and you'll see here how i've shown you how he's done it on this one page alone you can see that there's very variety in sentence length sentence type and um i the and the last line of this i just love someone who may just want to fill in the blank and say your name emphatically um the, it it has a lot of impact. Engage, don't bore your reader. All right. Um, if you know the information's common knowledge, you don't need to include it. All right. And that's what a normal person would already know. Okay. Show them what they don't know already. It can be, and this is this is really important, especially with this topic. Um, you could have an anecdote in there. It could be your story. It could be someone else's story. Um, you can interlock or interlace anecdotes with with facts and statistics, all right, and mix them up. Don't create your own statistics. Get them from a very credible source, please. That's very important, all right. And even if you want, you could in, in, or create a visual, all right. Back to here. How did he engage the audience? even where he has mother's owner on its own line and italicized. If you look at all of these sentences, you'll see that, or these paragraphs, you'll see they're pretty short too. Um, and he uses fragments sometimes just to add that emphasis, mother's owner, blank. All right. Those two words or those words just stand out because of how they've been shown um, on the page. All right. And he's good also about building that suspense. All right. If you look, the word struck me like lightning on a clear day, suddenly, unexpectedly, and emphatically. And they certainly knocked me back. Mother's owner. That's one of the words. All right. Um, and he goes through, and even at the bottom, you know, it's like the in between blank. You know, it has that punch. Make sure you organize your writing logically and don't jump around. All right. Make sure you have a clear connection between ideas. All right. Basics. All right. 
So you have the lead, which is that first paragraph. How are you going to grab the reader's attention? All right. It might be an interesting anecdote. It could also be a statistic. Don't forget that. All right. It could be a well, an opinion from a well-known expert. All right. Then you have a transition to your thesis or your main idea. All right. What do you think about the problem? It can be short. Remember, journalist writing can be short. Context and explanation. Use those statistics, the interview, and anecdotes to help the, show the issue. And then make sure you do have that call to action. What can readers do to solve the problem? All right. He did use organization to help present the material in a way that makes sense here. He had the lead, the transition to the thesis, the context and evaluation, and then that call to action. And feel free to go back and look at that. Look at those items too. All right. All right. Building an opinion piece. Again, think about your audience. Make sure you bring fair to the facts. Right. Um, make sure you're covering the five W's and H. Make sure you're researching from credible sources and showing how those sources are credible. Make sure you have that call to action. All right. Overall tips. Let's talk about first person, second person, and third person. First person is when the writer talks about I or me or we. All right, we is the plural. Second person is you or your, and third person he should he she it they. Your preference, the preferred in ninety eight percent of your writing, it really um, you want to try to keep to the third as much as you can. Um, first person singular. You want to avoid things like I'm writing this because I interviewed Sandy and she said I think we need to. I believe um, it's usually better to keep that focus not on the writer, but on the people who um, might be reading this. With that, with that, um, you want to watch the you as well, which we'll get to the next slide. All right. Um, we, when you use it in a editorial, it usually means the editorial board or the publication staff. What an editorial board is, it's a group of people who get together and then outline an issue and write um, and have opinions, do some research, and then present that issue and um, problems, the solutions, and that call to action um, in an article or in a story. All right. second person you all right it can be very preachy to the reader so you have to be what you have to be very watchful and mindful of that um don't pass blame and saying it's somebody else's problem it can also be inaccurate if you look over here um when you multitask you can't focus well on one main task that might not be accurate because maybe somebody doesn't multitask task so make sure you're very cognizant of that too usually the as I've put here, this is preferred in most instances, the he, she, they, it. When people multitask, they can't focus well on one main task. Third person is more objective, less biased. Even though you may have bias and an opinion, you kind of want to cut it um, when you can. All right. And that helps them pay that attention to those facts and reasons. Good. All right. So here we have our prompt again. Now that we've had at least three years since the pandemic began, some research indicated that teen mental health has been negatively impacted by this international event. What is the impact on this event on Pakistani's youth's mental health? And more importantly, how can teens unify to break the stigma concerning accessing mental health help? All right. I very much encourage you right now to pause in just a second and kind of think about these seven questions all right and make sure you have the reader in mind what do you want to say to the reader what's new about this topic who's the intended audience why does this topic matter to that audience how does this matter in your community and think about local community not just your national community but your local community and what should readers do about that issue and why do people or why do or should they care all right. So why don't you take a moment, pause this, and go ahead and write a few things down. All right. Now that we've done that, we're going to do a little brainstorming activity that will help you to, um, or we will in just a moment, that will help you kind of outline your ideas. All right. 
What you have to re remember is this is how the judges are going to evaluate you. They're going to look at the organization, structure, paragraph length, transitions. And I will be quite honest, that, that first paragraph is very, very, very important because if you can bring them into the story, that will automatically, subconsciously, they'll be like, oh, wow, this is good. Um, so please make sure you do that. Make sure you have a great, um, credible facts and um, you're appealing to people's logic, their empathy, and you're doing it in a credible way. Um, do you write with confidence and authority? Do you have good tone? And then always try to have your um, writing be free of mechanical or grammatical issues. They will not get too caught up in American English versus British English. Um, so I have people who always ask me that. I'm like, well, if it'll, they'll, they'll be, you'll be fine. Just make sure you just do the best you can. All right. All right. So this is the activity I was talking about. Um, I love to use these types of maps because I think if you um, can highlight kind of and get some ideas down, then one of these and how these two areas are going to connect might be um, really the crux of your argument. So what I would do is look and see COVID-19 impact on teen mental health. What has that been? Think about who, what, when, where, why, and how. All right. So how have they, who's been impacted? What have those impacts been? When are they impacted? Where? Why? How? And just go ahead and write this on a piece of paper and then fill that in all around. All right. And do the same then when you're done with how teens can break the stigma. Who can break the stigma? What can be done about the stigma? When can it be done? Where? Why should it be done? And then how can it be done? All right. So again, go ahead and work through that. After you finish that, what sources could you use? And that's gonna take you going and doing research and figuring that out, all right? And so that breakdown of the prompt, honestly, I always have I always had um, students do this type of activity because it does help them think through and prioritize their thoughts as well. If you think, wow, this really doesn't matter, do you have to include all of those items? No, um, and definitely don't, you don't need to include everything on your brainstorm sheet. It really is just trying to get those best nuggets of information or bits of nuggets, bits of information that you can use for your story, for your editorial. All right. The next part, obviously, you need to write it. Don't forget about your leads, your transition, your nut graph for that um, thesis of your story. All right. Registration and information. Ionivy.com slash quill hyphen scroll all right your deadline for entry is november 4th 2023 this is really really important um because they won't be able to take them late because of the timeline that we have for judges so please note that all right if you do have questions about the contest that you want me to look at the quill and scroll at studentpress.org is my email so feel free to use that um, I will try to get back to you within 24 hours, all right? I will tell you, start this process early. Don't wait until the night before the deadline to put it in. Um, your article will be much better if you can write it, let it sit for 24 hours, go back to it, read it again, rework what doesn't work, um, keep what does, what does, um, really, and see if you're missing anything. Are there areas in which you are, um, you might need to have a little more research or ideas. All right. Thank you very much for watching and being part of this experience. Um, I'm really eager to see what you have and what you turn in. So thank you very much and have a wonderful rest of your month. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So we have a few minutes. If you have any questions, uh, please throw them in the chat. We're going to answer all the questions in the chat. And of course, you can always email us and we'll address all your questions through email.
Yes, Myra, uh, what about the registration fee? It's 10 US dollar. Uh, what's the mode of payment? You can make the payment online. Once you register, you will receive all the details. The registration link is given in the chat box. Yes, you can uh, use Jazz Cash if you wish to, but uh, online uh, transfer to bank account is much preferred mode of payment. Yes, you uh, you can make the payment in PKR after converting the uh, ten US dollar amount. Yes, uh, number fourth is the uh, deadline to submit your uh, writing essay. Where do we submit? You can submit your essay on the uh, given email. Please uh, check the chat box. Uh, the next question is, when would the results announce? The results are announced approximately after two months, within two months. You can expect the results in uh, uh, mid-December or early January. Uh, you can share the uh, proof of payment at the given email. Quillen scroll at ionivy.com. What's the uh, uh, criteria? Uh, students from grade six to grade 12 can participate in this uh, writing contest. Uh, 